the balloons are used by the Germans for bombing raids, the Zeppelins on London. Uh, they are used for, for observation uh, and for artillery target designation along the Western Front, and they are quite instrumental. Tethered, of course, to the ground, communicating to the ground and uh, passing on critical information, time sensitive information about what they're seeing and protected by anti-aircraft artillery from fighters who would look to try and uh, destroy them. They go out of vogue a little bit in the interwar period for observation. Of course, there's that great Hindenburg disaster in the 1930s. So in the Second World War, we see balloons used to uh, protect from a, as an anti-aircraft tool to cut V-1 bomber wings, to deflect uh, aircraft and, and air-delivered weapons. It wasn't so much used for intelligence purposes, but the Japanese did develop a, a balloon bomb effectively, which was designed to be released from Japan and catch the, the prevailing trade winds and take the balloons across to Canada and the United States. There were hundreds of them that we deployed. They would land, they'd detonate, and they would set off a, a bomb that would kind of ignite major flame. They were a nuisance, but they weren't really all that effective. With the Second World War and thereafter, we see aircraft kind of supplanting balloons for surveillance and reconnaissance and intelligence purposes. A stereoscopic vision of photo photographs taken in quick succession by a plane flying over a target early 1960s. We see a greater emphasis on satellite surveillance. So this is for imagery, for photographing, listening in with signals intelligence, uh, and for across the radio frequency spectrum. In the Vietnam War, for instance, where you have major bases established where they're fairly static, we see the emergence of balloons, tethered balloons. They're basically listening out for uh, enemy communications and enemy activity in the area. That's taken to a whole new level during the conflict in Afghanistan. Coalition forces would have these tethered balloons that could use, you know, uh, visual and radio frequency monitoring of the domain in and around the FOB as a force protection measure uh, and as a way of complementing the surveillance and reconnaissance and intelligence picture that they were able to collect.